This time on the Rhodes Antique Show, Ashley and Kyle are bringing their family's treasures to this island nation to see what their values truly are. So Kyle, tell me what you have here. So, my grandfather was an explorer. He would travel the world in search of forgotten cities and treasures hidden there. And this is one of his treasures? Not exactly, it's his walking stick. Hmm, I see. I loved hearing about all his travels, and this handsome walking stick went with him everywhere. It's been from Greenland to Egypt to India to Brazil. It's got to be worth at least 7000 Well, as interesting as that story is, Kyle, I'm sorry to inform you that this is just a common walking stick. Okay. The polish is nice. It looks like we have a few original signatures carved here in the handle. But seeing as your grandfather didn't publish any of his adventures publicly, he remained unknown, so his walking stick is worth less than you estimated in a typical market. So... 4000 Try to. 2000 isn't bad. No, I mean $2. Oh. Oh, well, first off, it isn't mine. Oh, really? No. My good friend is letting me borrow it. It's kind of his newest invention. I see. You do know this is an antiques show, right? Of course. But I know you're good at telling people what their things are worth, so I figured I'd bring it in. Of course. Well, it seems, at first glance, this is a common portable radio. The knobs seem to be replaced with a digital display and some buttons. But this radio is special. It plays radio programs. What do you mean? Just watch and listen. Hey, Ashley, check this out. I don't think you should be goofing around with that, Kyle. It's not a toy. Sure it is. See, that tag says, Vintage Toy Pop Gun. Yeah, and underneath it says, 1879. It's an antique. Look around you, Ashley. It's an antique store. Everything is an antique. Find anything interesting, kids? I found this, Mr. Jacobs. I haven't seen a pop gun in a long time. You mean since 1879? (laughs) Well, I'd have to say it's been slightly more recent than that. Hey, guys, look at all these toy trains. Where? Let me see. You know, Mr. Jacobs, for a place that sells a lot of old things, there is a lot of stuff for kids around here. That's true, Ashley. Probably because no matter how far back you go in human history, there were always kids who liked to play with things. Did you play with trains like these growing up, Mr. Jacobs? I sure did, Gwen. I had one of those Santa Fe locomotives and that steam engine there. Huh. I wonder what happened to those. Do you think these might be the ones you played with growing up? That would be so cool. Oh, it would be, but I doubt it. I didn't grow up around here, and there were a lot of those around back in the day. Still, they might be yours. Well, if they were, they would have my name written on them. Maybe they do. I can't see anything from here. Do you think you could get Mr. Rhodes to get them out of the case so we can look closer, Mr. Jacobs? I don't know, guys. That price tag says $80. He might not want a bunch of kids touching something so expensive. That's why we let Mr. Jacobs ask for us, Ashley. You know, I might just do that. I'll go see if he's busy. All right. I still think he'll say no. While we wait for him to do that, you want to listen to the radio? Sure. No luck, Mr. Jacobs? Mm, Not yet, Ashley. He's talking with some customers about a pump organ. I can wait. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Jacobs? Sure, Gwen. What's up? Well, we've been looking at a lot of these old antiques, and some of them are a lot more expensive than I thought they would be. Like this little glass angel is $25. This toy car is $55. Why are they so expensive? That's a good question, Gwen. And a lot has to do with the value of these things. Value? Isn't that just how much something costs? Not exactly, Kyle. Value is how much you think something is worth. Hmm. So what makes people think these are so valuable? I mean, they're just old rusty dusty toys. Well, they're old. And rare. That's true. A few other things that add value to things is who made them and who owns them. A cupboard may just be a regular cupboard. But if you knew that Thomas Jefferson made the cupboard and it was owned by Thomas Edison, it would be worth a lot more. That makes sense. And it's the same when it comes to people. Huh? I think I see what you mean, Ashley. And I might know a Bible story about it. Let me see if I can find a Bible. I'll be right back. Oh, I wanted to do a drama script. 
It's been too long since I've read one of those. I don't think he carries all his drama scripts around with him. That would be a lot of scripts. <laughs> he should just download them all on an app instead. Well, in the meantime, want to listen to the radio while we wait for him? That sounds like a good idea. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the biblical story, King Solomon and the Baby, a true story about love. Once... But, Mr. Jacobs, we're not in your garage today. We're in an antique store. I think that's how he starts all his drama scripts. I think it'll be okay just this once. Okay. Once upon a time in the land of Israel, there were two ladies. Hello. Welcome. These two ladies were very similar. They both had the same job, they lived in the same house, and they both had little babies. And both babies are little boys. One night, one of the babies died. The mother was heartbroken. She wanted to have a baby so much that she did something very strange. She snuck into the other lady's room and switched babies. There, now I have a baby again. That is strange. You can imagine what happened the next morning. Oh no, my baby! It's... wait a minute, this isn't my baby. Good morning, friend! How is my... your baby this morning? This isn't my baby, it's your baby. You switched them in the night. I don't know what you're talking about. The two argued all morning and then decided to take this matter to the king. The king? That's right. In those days, if you had a serious enough of an argument, sometimes the king would make the decision for you. Interesting. And so the two ladies went before King Solomon to present their case. It's my baby. He has my eyes. No, it's my baby. He has my hair. It wasn't an easy problem to solve. Hmm. These ladies are super similar. It's hard to tell who is the real mother. That's when the king had an idea. I know what to do. Since it's impossible to know who's telling the truth, I have decided that you both share the baby. But that's not fair. You're right. That's why we'll cut the baby in half. Each lady will take half, and it will be fair. Oh, I like that idea. Let's do it. What? No. This is my baby, not a candy bar or something. Please don't kill the baby, just give it to her. I don't want him to get hurt. It was then really obvious who was the true mother. A mother's love will always do anything to protect their baby, even if it means letting someone else take the baby. She is the true mother, give it to her. Oh, thank you, wise king. I still think we should go with his first idea. There are many morals to this story, But one thing that stands out to me today is the love of the real mother. She loved her child so much that she was willing to give up everything so that he would be safe. And the same is true about God. He loves us so much that he was willing to give up himself so that we would be safe. That's a lot of love. And if you think about it, that means we are very valuable to him. You are valuable to God. Thanks, Dustin. I'll let you know when I'll need to put it back in the case. So, does the train have your name on it, Mr. Jacobs? No, Ashley. Not surprising, though. It was really a long time ago. Yeah, it still would be cool, though. That's true, Kyle. You've been looking at this antique lamp for a while, Gwen. Thinking of buying it? Huh? Oh, no. I was just thinking about the Bible story we did earlier. Me too. I think King Solomon was a little crazy. I mean, how was cutting that baby in half a good idea? Wait, did that story really happen? That's what it says in 1 Kings 3.16. I doubt he really wanted to do something that horrible. It was just a test to see who loved the baby more, and it worked. That's interesting. What is, Ashley? The chapter and verse, 3.16. It reminds me of another verse in the Bible, John 3.16. That's a pretty famous one. Yep. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. But that's kind of what I was wondering. Why? What do you mean? Why does God love us so much? 
He's made much better things in the universe than us humans. That's kind of a weird question to ask. I don't know. It makes a little sense. It's definitely not the first time that question has been asked. In fact, King Solomon's father, King David, asked God the same question in Psalm 8. Did God give an answer? Well, not in that chapter, but I think the Bible has a few clues. For instance, in Genesis 2, God decided to make humans in his own image. Meaning? That's a tough thing to explain, but it's like this toy train. It's not really a train, but it looks and acts like a train. It does the same thing as a real train, but smaller and a little simpler. That's kind of what humans are like compared to God. All right, I think I get what you're saying. Right, but still, we are pretty messed up, Mr. Jacobs. Even if we are a lot like God, we do things that are really not God-like. We do bad things all the time, and I'm pretty sure that makes God pretty mad, doesn't it? That's true, Gwen. But in Ephesians 2, it tells us why God still loves us, his incredible mercy. In 2 Peter 3, 9, God tells us that he doesn't want anyone to be punished for the wrong things they've done. So he's patient, waiting for us to turn back to him. Yeah, God loves us so much, he wants to forgive us all the time. We don't deserve it, but his love for us is greater than our weakness. Exactly, Ashley. I still don't understand. I don't think I'm that special. I'm just me. (laughs) That's the thing about God. He knows the truth about us, and that truth is that you are a treasure worth giving up everything for. Wow. So, speaking of treasures, are you going to buy that train, Mr. Jacobs? I'll have to think about it, Kyle. Well, while you think about it, I think I'll be heading home, Mr. Jacobs. Yeah, me too. Do you want us to put the radio in your truck? That would be great, Gwen. Thanks. Don't forget to turn it off. Oh, right. Right.